Well, welcome back. I'm working on the painting of my garden and Sophia and I am painting out there. The perspective looks a little odd. She's big and I'm little. That's because the camera's in an angle to the painting. I showed you in the very beginning the painting where it is at this point so that you get, you can see that the figures are in perspective and the right sizes, but I just, I have to turn, put the camera at an angle so that I can paint. If I had it right behind me, you wouldn't be able to see what I was painting. I'm working on the climbing rose here. This is called a Peggy Martin rose, and I'm using mixtures of permanent rose plus white for the, for the blossoms. The Peggy Martin rose is really a neat uh, rose. We discovered this when actually we were living at our previous home in Floresville, about oh, 45 miles from here in the Texas Hill Country. And we um, had a wonderful little nursery. Karen and Stu just, oh my gosh, they had the beautiful gardens and it was just fish ponds and waterfalls and I loved going there. Jack didn't because every time we went I'd spend a bunch of money on plants. But we discovered the Peggy Martin roses there and the neat thing about these roses is they have no thorns. They were originally uh, discovered in the Ninth Ward in New Orleans after Hurricane Katrina and they had been submerged in salt water when the ocean flooded the the Ninth Ward, they had been submerged for several days in the salt water and they survived. So some commercial growers decided to propagate them for just all of us flower lovers to buy for our gardens. And so we bought some down there, loved them, and so when we moved up to this house, we have a couple of arbors with the Peggy Martin roses on them and they're just really beautiful in the springtime. Oh my goodness. So we are painting right under this arbor or just on this side of the arbor. And so I start walking all the flowers in again with mixtures of white plus permanent rose. Permanent rose is one of those colors that I don't normally have on my palette, but it makes such a beautiful pink. It's, it's just I've got some colors that I go to when I need special, special colors, and this is one of them. I carefully work around my drawing of Sophia, and I don't want to mess up, but I can, this, that was drawn in with a mixture of my mud plus liquid, and the mud is two parts of ultramarine blue and one part of alizarin crimson plus liquid. And now it's dry, so I can go, if I paint over it, I can come back and just erase by taking a brush dipped in my odorless turpenoid thinner, and I can just lift off the color and don't destroy my sketch. So anyway, I work around her, and this color is going to come down behind her little painting. I think I'm going to have some of that, some of those flowers come down here. I'll also have some of the foliage come down here too. But this will just accentuate that white jasmine or that creamy colored jasmine in the back. And also then this dark accentuates our fountain there. And some of those little tendrils of roses come down and break right down over our background. Just makes it lacy. And I, I put all different shades. I have several different mixtures of this, this combination that gives me light and dark shades. And so I can just put that color up there. I block in my flowers first. I'll come back and then do the foliage. But this way my flower color will stay nice and clean. If I did the greens first 
and then tried to come back with the pinks, it would dirty my pink colors. And this, the light's coming in from the right, so this is going to be lighter here. and some lights. I just kind of use my different values of color. I'm going to go in to make this all pink and then I can come back and bring some greens in there. But the color comes down behind my, my canvas. And now I've painted my hair in there. I've used some of my color that I used for the rock to make that blonde and that's a mixture of mud plus white and cadmium yellow medium and a little bit of cadmium orange, lots of white. And that gives me those colors and that paint is pretty well dry. So I can come back and I have some of that paint saved. So I can come back in and, and I can just brace against this dry part of the canvas to come back in work around that and just soften that edge of my hair. Just a little smaller brush. And then I just come back and I can soften that edge. A little finer brush and some of my original color and just make a few hairs come break, break out. A few hairs that catch in the wind and You don't want the edges of your hair to be all totally, you want, to, you want it to be soft. There we go on the hair. I may work a little bit more on that, but that's Okay, let's come back with our greens. And we're going to be darker underneath and on the left side, because that's in shadow. And this darkness then accentuates the, the jasmine and the, the fountain, the water on the fountain. And I'm using mixtures of Viridian Green plus Cadmium Orange plus a little bit of Cadmium Yellow Medium. And that just gives me a little different green in the background. Now these greens back here are Viridian plus some white. But this I want to be warmer so it comes forward. I just come back in, I can work in between my, around the masses of pink. You can see how my brush picks up some of that pink. It doesn't matter since I'm working in the green, but if I had been put the green in first and then started working my pinks into it, you can see how it would have really messed up my, my flower color. It doesn't matter if the greens get a little muted with the pinks, but I don't want to do that with my flowers. This is a mixture of phthalo blue plus white. This just gives some coolness in the foliage. And 
But I can use the flat edge of the brush. This is a bright brush. It's a square end. You can you see how I use the flat edge to do wider, thicker areas, or I can use the corner to do smaller brush strokes. And that's what I really like about these brushes. Once I discovered these, I pretty well stopped using all the filberts and the rounds and the, all those other brushes that I had been using. I just, I really prefer these. I use different shades of this green mixture, again, to give variety within the foliage. We're going to be darker under here, and I've even bring in a mix of my phthalo blue plus liquid to just give me a nice, even a deeper dark and a cool dark. I'll let some of these leaves come down. You want your edges to be feathery. I'll bring some of my phthalo blue plus white in there just to give some variety. Now we're going to start adding some light because the light catches the top of this and the little bit of this part here. Now here we're going to start getting this whole side of the arbor is going to be, be lighter. I still want a few darks in there. So there's depth in that foliage. Neat thing about this arbor is I have a mockingbird. Mockingbird has built her nest in there. So every spring she comes back and we have little baby mockingbirds. The nest is right up in this area right there. I love seeing the little birds and just hearing them. And we've got bird feeders and with the fountain they all come to drink and they take their bath. And fountain and splash all the water around and it's just I love birds. This mockingbird, we've got Mr. and Miss Chippers there. They're northern the red northern cardinals. Just a lot of fun. Jack's favorites were the cardinals. We had a bird feeder where he could look out as he was working and watch the birds and lots of times I'd look over from my easel and he'd just be staring out the window watching the birds at the feeder. It was a really special, special thing. So it seems like everywhere we've lived we've fed the birds. So you can see this just Walk this in and bring some greens down in there. I'm going to have yellow flowers in here and here. You probably can't see where I was pointing, but yellow, I don't know if this shows up on the screen, probably not, but there's yellow flowers and then camera lilies over here. So that's how I block in the roses, the climbing roses. I have more work to do, but I just wanted to show you that and I'll show you a picture of once I get the, the Rose Arbor done. But I thank you so much for following along today and just when you're out and about and you see somebody that's maybe having a tough time or have a lady with children that's got the shopping cart and three crying children, go give them a hand. Just help somebody and uh, you'll make their day. Give them a big smile too. You just don't know how much that smile means. So you have a wonderful, wonderful day, and thank you again for watching my YouTube videos. And please subscribe to my channel. And thank you. Bye-bye.